What's up? Welcome back to the remedy. We got my boy, Jaden Nikarima. We're gonna chat about life. Uh, new path Jaden's on. The trouble he's gone through and the ups and downs. So, without further ado, let's get to it. What's up, boy? What's up, baby? <laughs> Thanks for coming around, homie. All good, all good. What's been happening, man? Nah, just a bit of this, bit of that. Working. Um, do we've got an academy. Me and Colour just started through this this coronavirus with young kids. I've seen um, that popping up, man. Yeah, yeah, just going live on Facebook. So we were originally we we're going to start a, a junior academy um, called the Image Property Academy for 12, 13, 14 year olds. Mm. I'm um, like rugby league kids, um, like with nutrition, footy, just to help them out. Um, and then once the virus hit, sort of blew out our our idea. So we were like, oh, well, why not just give back to the peninsula at first mm. and do these live videos? And then, yeah, people from like Sydney and stuff caught onto it and it just like blew out. And we're like, oh. What days well, do you do that? Like Tuesday, Thursday, Arvo. I see um, it come up, bro, when I'm on Facebook. On it's like, Jaden Nikrim is live. Yeah. <laughs> like, check in for a bit, like, hop off. And then Saturdays, we usually do a challenge, but we're going to start um, easing up on that now, like all the uh, social media stuff and start going out to footy teams that are going to be training. Oh, so doing the physical, yeah. Yeah, because the restrictions start to drop now. So, mm. yeah, but cool. other than that, just studying my cert four at the moment, nearly finished that. And Little potty up and running as well. Yeah, the Bro Chat podcast too, which... Dropped like three, four weeks ago. Mm. Um, yeah, it's been exciting. Whose idea was that? Zaya and Brody. So they're the two on there. Um, they were talking about, they always get have like some pretty cool ideas about yeah. Um, yeah, different things in life. And they're like, oh, what if we actually like made a podcast? Told Glenn and then Glenn like caught on to it and was like, oh, well, he's one of those guys that like if he buys into it, likes it, he'll do it straight away. So mm. we rock up, rock up to um, Project 180 where we do it. The next day, and he's got like a, a kit deck like you, and like, whoa, four new mics. So, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. just got it straight into it. So, how did you get you just got in contact with that dude through Redcliffe? Yeah, he's yeah. Cass's mate, yeah, yeah, Cass's mate. So, last December, we um had like an army camp, mm. and you know how like army camps are just torture, like, just you, you come away from them and you hate life. Mm. This one was like different, like, we empowered you yeah bit. just we did like heaps of mindset stuff like still physical um but like, the ending we finished on like a big physical thing on the beach mm. challenge and then we all had like a team feed at the marucci surf club it might have been mm. and then we come away from that and i just come away just feeling so good so i reached out to to glenn and that was just yeah the start of me coming onto the new path how good bro that's been crazy man seeing you like I remember I kind of reached out to you like a while ago. I was still like a little bit, you know, like not who I am today. Yeah. And like you were like trying to find like you you knew where to go, but you just couldn't get there because you, I don't know, it felt like it looked like you had like these weights pulling you back. Like, nah, bro, can't yeah. do this. And so it's cool to see where you are now, man. Like, yeah, is it, I didn't really realize um, how far back or like what I was doing like two years ago, like you, you sort of think you're on the right path and then like in hindsight now, looking back on it, I was so far off track. Mm. Like I thought I was on the right track. Um, but yeah, just remove, not removing different people, but like surrounding myself around different people so then I become a better person. Because mm. thinking back on it, like I was around not um, like people that are driven and sort of just fell like alcohol and and drugs and i i felt like that was my place so i yeah. just took that to a new level it's, it's not saying those people are bad people yeah it's nah, like not at all you, you just you're not comfortable with this anymore and you like need to find you're not saying like fuck you i, I don't like you're bad for me yeah. kind of way you yeah. just like uh like i just need to find new people for myself it's and some people would take that the heart a bit yeah, like, definitely. like you know say if i was your friend and i was in that circle it's like, man, are you like talking shit about, you know? But you're not. You kind of, yeah. because I'm the same, like not to an extent that you were, but I'm just kind of removing myself from, 
situations where I would be in before and then my whole mental um, like state is just like that's not me anymore like yeah. I don't really want to do that anymore usually like thinking back on it like people would usually just brush their mates and then um, just forget about them not talk to them ever again mm-hmm. where now you see with us like we haven't brushed them we've sort of like gone down a new path but they've like they've followed and they're they're coming with us on the journey yeah. Um, changing their life too so that's been awesome to see yeah even if it's not to the extent they're yeah. still making steps forward you know, changes, which is yeah. cool um, yeah bro so let's t- take it back like I played football with you in 20s didn't we yep 20, yeah we yeah. played 20s um, what a year <laughs> yeah I knew you through Cody yeah. um, your older brother I played with Cody and yeah we like we had a good relationship man or we were just pretty much in that footy circle playing 20s kinging around, drinking, like, just having a good time when we were 19, 20. Um, and then you got an NRL gig down in Sydney. Yeah. Um, how was that, bro? How was that experience going down there? Yeah, awesome, man. I'll take us back to our 20s days because yeah. that was just the best time of my life. Um, 17, then I had, like, all you boys, 19, 20, so you were all on your last year. Mm. Um, so that was sort of like an incentive to, to give it a red-hot crack and then... Because our team was going so good at the time, make made the grand final. Mm. Yeah, it sort of helped my chances. Um, then and then, the next year, following year, you had to obviously use obviously in that phase where you work or get signed up. And mm. Cody ended up getting signed, um, or was signed. There would have been like three or four of us going for that fourteen position. Cody obviously had his front uh, f- foot in the door before anyone else. Um, so, yeah, when. Uh, I was coming off contract. I had a, a few clubs reaching out, um, met up with them, and then, yeah, the Roosters just caught my eye. Um, having a chat with Robbo and uh, the boys down there that were coming up through the ranks like Hastings and Latrell Mitchell, like you sort of think, oh, you could sort of form your own dynasty there and come up through the ranks. So ended up signing with the Chooks. Um, my first year pre-season was just torture. Like, I thought I was fit, but, like, never really... What'd you sign for? Um, so I was six fifty over three years. How like old were you? Eighteen year old, which was yeah, like unheard of. Was yeah, that's like so, yeah, boy. yeah, yeah. So yeah, first first year went there, sort of like a learning phase, you know. And um, you didn't you didn't expect too much from yourself. You weren't like no. I'm going to come down here and be the best player. You yeah. kind of just like on a roll away. Eh? Like yeah, well, you know, pre seasons. Uh, if you're not in the top seventeen, you become a reggie, and you're not really like forced into it. Mm. Well, I was still a Reggie at the time until Mitchell Pierce got in trouble, um, that dog incident. That was my first year. And then that was two weeks out from the World Club Challenge. Mm. And then I was next in line to play. And then they just threw me in like, are you ready? And I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no way. Like, I've done no, I've done like a little bit of team stuff, um, but not to the extent because you never expect Mitchell Pierce like not to play mm. for the whole year. So I've been chucked in. Um I watched that game, bro, I think. Yeah, went to Dubai for a training camp. Mm. So I'm on top of the world, like, young 18-year-old Dubai, never been there before. Then we go to Manchester, um, play that World Club Challenge against St. Helens. Mm. Five minutes in, get knocked out, standard me. Um, And then you have that 15-minute protocol, come back on the field, and then, yeah, just had a binder. Yeah, you had a good game, bro. World Club Challenge. Um, After that game, all the Roosters, uh, like head office, whatever they're called, um, came to me after the game and shook my hand, um, were talking to me, and then all the boys were like, bro, they never do that to us, like, yeah, you're going good, so, man, I was on cloud nine, my first year of um, uh, the Chooks, wasn't in, like, my best shape, or, um, obviously, my body hadn't matured yet, being 18, mm. and then that soon got caught out, because my first six six games of first grade, I lost just wasn't really in it got dropped i i watched the game bro and i was like i watched your games and i was like you it just looked like you didn't really want to yeah. like be a part of it in a way yeah like, I, I felt like i i forgot how to play footy mm. that's what i felt like you know like my best thing is i don't think about anything like just instincts and just nothing was coming off for me mm. so i think yeah around by around seven i think it was like eight got dropped back to um the 20s was Anzac Day and then played a 20s game sort of think oh yeah like this is this is me I'm going to carve up and I just 
had did not know what I was doing. So then after that, I sort of sat down and then had a good hard thing about like what I wanted to do in life. Like was hating on footy at that time. So I've gone from like loving life, World Club Challenge, top of the world to eight weeks later being found out that I wasn't at the right peak of fitness and how much pressure was on you bro like at the f- your debut it's like did you put a lot of pressure on yourself yeah a little bit just after the because the world cup challenge you went so good you sort of want to bring that back onto into first grade and make a name for yourself and yeah i think like halfway through that like third fourth game in oh so much pressure on myself just to just to perform and just to try get all the plays right and down pat and like push with your back row and stuff like that and it just was not coming off so but when you think back to your um upbringing and playing football through high school and stuff did you have pressure outside source on you then Were you did you have a lot of pressure on you no nah, i don't think i did i eh? like just no? i just played footy just, just did it natural yeah, yeah. no so pressure from mum and dad or anything nah, they were always by your side yeah eh? No, they're the least people to put pressure on. The only thing um, pressure-wise that would come off it would be um, like always being compared to Cody and yeah. like trying to live that name. But other than that, yeah, no, nothing. So, yeah, I got dropped um, from the Roosters first grade team in round eight. Played terrible for the 20s. Mm. And I was just like thinking to myself, like, what am, what am I doing? Not good. And then the next next game, tore my hammy. Um, and then from then on, yeah, I played one game after that. Um, tore my hammy like three or four times at the back end. So then, yeah, just that was gone from like the biggest high to the biggest low. Um, and I need, I spoke to the Roosters. I was like, oh, I'm not doing well here. Like, I need to, mm. need to go away. Um, and just like enjoy life. So I reached out to Brimo. Um, we travelled Europe for, for like a month. Went backpacking. Mm. Unreal, and then came back, did like fitness testing the next year at the Roosters, like the same as the first year. And I, like, I blitzed it, like, just was completely different. Have you ever done a four and five? No, I don't that think so. it's like a one point three, but like you just run in like a square. Four oh laps yeah, I five think minutes. I think I did it Redcliffe actually. That's yeah. pretty hard, man. Yeah. <laughs> so like my first year, I would have got like five twenty five thirty, which is bad for a half. Mm. And then it would come back from Europe after like drinking heaps and just enjoying life and ran like a 440 and I was like, oh, what am I doing? Mm. And then obviously my body had like matured um, and then, yeah, went on from there to start the year off good um, at the Roosters, like had an awesome pre-season. And then it wouldn't have been, it would have been like origin time. Uh, Mitchell Pierce was going to play origin and I was next in line to come up. And the game before that, um, oh, so I got told that I was, like, in line to play the following week. And then, yeah, on the Saturday um, before that, tore my hammy again. Would have been, like, the fifth time in less than a year. And then, yeah, it all just went sort of downhill from there. Mm-hmm. You're sort of around, like, the drug scene and the alcohol and the girls throughout, but that took it to a new level mm-hmm. um, after that, so my second year. So you yeah, so you already had like a bit of ego, like feeding your ego before you tore your hemi the second time. Yeah. And then when you did you just like fuck well, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to be here anymore. Sort of thing. Like you see your mates, um, at the time, like going out, getting on the piss, like doing drugs, girls having the best time on your Snapchats and stuff, and you're thinking like, Well fuck if if I'm sacrificing not doing that to play footy and then I do this, well I'm just gonna throw it all away now. So mm. And plus you had like the money coming in every month, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. you're like, uh. So I had like money put aside, um, mum, mum controlled that. But the money that I did get, like I paid my bills and I still had like $3,000 or something to spare, 4000 over a month um, my first year in 20s, which is heaps. Mm. And then, yeah, I sort of just worked out what I was going to pay for, groceries, um, bills, and then what I can spend. And then, yeah, it just my second year just went... Drugs, alcohol, mm. um, ended up getting caught. So you get three strikes, I think. Mm. First strike is um, you, your CEO knows, but that's about it. You get like a, you have to go on like a twelve week, um, what's it called, like psychological thing as to yeah. like why you did it with you, the club doctor. 
second strike is um, like a 12 match ban and the club has the opportunity to tear it and the mm. third one is you're completely gone from the first grade so for two years or no is it two years I or don't know that's Ben awesome. Barber is third year so I think third strike so it might be just okay, yeah. done I don't think any club would want you after a third strike anyway but mm. yeah so I had my first strike um, what did we like maybe a month after doing my hammy um, it was during Origin after Origin I I had a big big night origin, which is on Wednesday. Um, pulled up like Thursday or maybe even Friday morning, and then get to back to Sydney because I was in Brisbane at the time. Get back to Sydney on the Monday, and I get tested then. And you sort of think, oh, like two three days, you'd be sweet. Nothing will come off it, and then two weeks later, tested positive. And I was like, oh shit, like fuck, sort of got to change something here, mm. but. The next day, I went and had a meeting with the CEO, and he's just like, "All right, mate, you've been caught first time. This is what you've been done for. Um, it's only me and you that know. The coach doesn't know. No one else knows." Um, and then, yeah, he just goes, "You got to do a twelve-week program from um, this date to here, and then after that, you're done." So I've sort of like gone, "Oh yeah, sweet, gone Let out." Off the hook, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like coach walks past, says nothing. Players around there like said nothing, and you're just like, "Oh." Like, it's it's sweet. So then, sort of forget about it. Um, and then end of that year, we made the grand final, and I obviously lost another grand final, mm. worst record. And then I got tested. By, I remember I got tested by Sada straight after the game. And then like all clear, obviously playing footy. Um, then I headed down to Wyong, and then yeah, just flipped the switch. And the Roosters lost um, the next day. So. We went back to Sydney the next day uh, and had our Mad Mondays together. And then that would have been like Saturday or Sunday. And then on the... So I've finished up Sunday. On the Wednesday or Thursday, I get a text like on my names on the board. I've got to come in because we had our player review, um, get tested. And then I was flying back to Brizzy. It didn't even like trigger in my head that... Um, like I knew I was getting tested, but it didn't trigger in my head that like second strike, 12 week, um, 12 match band, or like I could lose potentially like 600k so i went in done the piss test like walked out as if nothing happened back in brizzy um and then it was after my 21st um got a phone call saying mate your test come in positive then this was like three four weeks after so you, i'm just thinking like bullshit <laughs> mm. and i was like what is it for and he goes oh, he named like three different things and then one of them was like a prescription drug and i was like what I didn't take prescription drugs. Like, I know I took something, but not, not prescri- uh, prescription drugs. But then you sort of don't know what's in, like, Coke or, or mm. pills these days. So, it like, literally could have been. And then, yeah, I was just... I didn't want to lose a contract. I didn't want to tell my parents that I failed them by, by doing that. So, um, from then on in, it sort of, like, made the news that I, that I failed um, twice. Um, and that was on my way back because I was originally going to move back to Brizzy um, to sign with the Bronx mm. halfway through, like in between my second and third year. Because you were struggling down there. Yeah, yeah just yeah. struggling. And there was an opportunity back because Cody was back in the halves and mm. come off the bench. So, yeah, I was flying back to Brizzy. It was after my 21st to move my stuff down anyway and I uh, came out on the news that oh, I had done my second strike. So um, I, wa- I was flying back to tell mum and dad in person. And yeah, hit the news before I could do that. I remember I told mum in the car because Izzy Izzy called her and was like, "Oh, are you with Jaden? Have you seen Have you seen the news?" And I told mum like burst out in tears, crying. And then I was driving home, and I don't know how far away we were. Um, Twenty minutes, we'll say. And dad calls and goes, uh, "Deb, you got you got Jaden with you?" And he goes, and mum was like, "Yeah." And then he just goes, "Bring him home." And then like you know, as a young kid, mm. you think. I'm just going to get towed up here. Like, cricket bat will be out. Just get smack, <laughs> smacked around. And I get it. And then I'm just like crying. I'm like, so sorry, Dad. And he just like goes sit down. And then I'm just like, wait, I like, brace myself. I had a jumper on too, just to take on a bit <laughs> of impact. And then he just started breaking down crying. And I was just like, fucking that, like, that hit hurts way more than actually getting hit. Mm. So, yeah, from then on in... Well, you think, bro, your dad's work. Your dad goes to work. Yeah. His last name's Nicaremus. Like, oh, how did you, yeah. you know this fella? You know what I mean? Yeah, so he's, he's more worried about the 
uh, it's fair enough, the name, and then, like, Cody's obviously in the NRL, so I'm mm. going to tarnish his name there and his reputation. Um, so, yeah, after that, I, like, told the parents, and then because it was prescription drug, I was like, oh, I can get away with this. Um, so I reached out to some of the uh, Wyong boys just asking, um, asking them if they'd take the rap. Um, one of the boys said yes, like, mm. he, yeah, he'll do it. Um, I'll give him a certain amount of money, um, and take the rap, and then it'll be sweet, like, they can't do anything. And then went to court there um, in Sydney to fight the NRL and whatnot, and he didn't show up to, like, the court thing. I think he, all he had to do was, like, video call in or, or just rock up, and he said he was on a, a boat cruise or something. I don't know what it was. Mm. But, yeah, just didn't rock up, so... I've given him, like, X amount of money um, to, like, cover me. He doesn't rock up. And then um, I just sort of go to the lawyer, like, mate, just call it. Like, I'll just cop the 12-match the ban. Like, I'll pay you whatever, and I just want to start fresh, get it over and done with. So then he's like, yes, yeah, sweet. I moved back to Brizzy. Um, was in talks to, to Reddy, but I obviously couldn't, like, come back and play. This mm. would have been, like, around January. And then I think it was, like, March, April – popped up in the news again that I had um done like a false stat stat deck, um, me and him, that he has the dude that took the fall come clean, said that he lied on the stat deck, um, as well mm. and that yeah, I was lying about it all. So then <laughs> originally I was like, Bro, what are you doing? Like you obviously you can get in trouble too for doing it. Mm. Like as well as me, but like you can too. And I d I wasn't messaging him because I like, deleted everything, like, his number, like, mm. blocked my full social media and just wanted a fresh start. And then, yeah, three months later when I finally felt like I was, like, going on the right track, that happens. So I've, like, gone downhill, hit rock bottom, um, get caught drink driving um, in Ipswich, so I lost my... Fuck, bro, you got a rap. Yeah. Um, lost my licence for, like, eight months. And that was, like, when, like, my darkest days happens, like, just... Mm. Or just wanted to end it, so... But, like, what when you... Man, you put in... When you look back... Or, or when I look back, it's like, I'm glad you got caught. Yeah. Because you wouldn't be... Sit, like, imagine if that dude from Wyong took the rap and then you're still playing football, still in the... Yeah. S- you know what I mean? Yeah. And, then like, who knows what could have happened, but when you're saying, like, um, your darkest days, like, what about when you're going through all that, man, and you and you're lying to yourself and to all your friends and like all your family, like, because you're not telling them the truth, what's happening? Yeah. Like that's so much pressure on yourself, bro. Yeah. Like I've 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 lied before and I've been there, and it's so much pressure. Like every day waking up, knowing like, say a text comes through, this has happened, and then you're telling somebody else that something else. Something else. Yeah. That's so much pressure, man, and you just like eating yourself and. You, you know? Would have been, yeah, like a good three, three, four months. It was just like going to bed crying. I'm just like, fuck, like, just tell the truth, bro. Like, just yeah. let it off your shoulders. You'll feel so much better. And thinking back on it, like, when I told my parents and stuff, I should have just left it at that, like, did nothing. But then there was a part of me that just wanted um, like them not to think that I was, like, a druggo. And then part of me that wanted the money and then to get back in the NRL because I was like, oh, fuck, like, I've lost it all. So then you try to lie your way out of it and then... Oh, yeah, it just ate me up for like yeah, six to eight months, and then fuck, you sort of yeah. So you get over it. You feel like you you're going turning a leaf in your life. In talks with Freddie, so you're like looking forward to getting back into footy, and then this comes out that it's going to go up to like the high court, Supreme Court, um, and that you could potentially go to jail. And then <laughs> I was like, fuck, looking up on Google, um, false that deck, and it's like, oh yeah, like um, minimum five years or something like that. And I was just like, oh. Like, wh- what have I done? Like, yeah. There's no going back from here on in. Fuck, and I, I, I listened to a bit of your bro chat where you were saying, like, your darkest days and stuff. And there's a bit in there, like, you want, you thought about killing yourself. Yeah, definitely, like, pr- numerous times during that s- during that time, mm. whether it was, like, getting in my car and just crashing it or overdosing. Um, thought about that, like, numerous times because I was obviously heavy on drugs and alcohol during that time. Mm. Um but yeah, it was just such a such a shit time to go through, and then. What made you want it? What made you like the party animal, man? Like, what inside you made you want to be? The the, the party, pers- yeah, the party animal. Yeah, the I people like goes back to um, school days. Like, obviously, 
I was like pretty in high regards at school. Um, but then all my good mates were like non footballers, so they sort of got away with like drinking on Friday, Saturday nights, and then like going to work Monday. And I couldn't do that because I was um, playing footy on Saturdays or Sundays. Mm. So yeah, I think just wanting to be like them, thinking it's cool, no pressure, um, nothing like you see nowadays. Like if you do something stupid, it's caught on mm. caught on the phone. And I didn't really want that title, so yeah. I... You, yeah, you kind of like when I sit back and think about it, it's like because you're competitive and you want to be the best at like everything. Yeah. So when it comes to drinking and partying, like okay, I'm gonna be the best here at doing and this. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and I've got like a like a pretty big personality too, so I like to be like class clown or or some of like that. So I've yeah. always got to do like something significant in like a big drink up to mm. to stand out and to be like the the chat the next morning. Um. So yeah. It's crazy, yeah. yeah. It's so crazy. So in hindsight, man, like <laughs> thinking about what I've what I did during that like six month period was just yeah, mm. pretty stupid. But um like yeah, thinking about it now, like I'm so grateful that I got caught, um, that I went to that I went to court for um the drugs and the drink driving because if I had gotten away with it then, um, like if he so it didn't come out saying I lied on the state deck and I got all that money back and I wouldn't have learned anything. No. I would have learned that lying gets you gets you out of um things and like I didn't earn that so mm. continue to do so you would yeah. have yeah. And um yeah and then so what then you went to ready? So yeah, after the, the court date, um I think I got community service, um a criminal record on there too. Mm. And then like and I've got like twenty thousand dollars or something ridiculous, um, but then after that I was had like a year off, had to do um, some courses and stuff um, that the NRL said I had to do, and then I went to Ready during that time. They took me under um, under their wing. Mm. Um, they've been they're pretty good with that in that regard, like looking after Lodgy and yeah. Miles um, and, the, and stuff like that. So yeah, Crush and Moggy took me on. Were helping me through. Um, through what I was going through and then, yeah, obviously I, I kicked him in the stomach because I was there when I did the drink driving. Mm. Um, so I got done drink driving and sort of like tarnished my name in their rep um, during that time and then after that drink driving incident, they are like, mate, like obviously no one in um, Cup had been done before doing that but um, like you've, you've got a rap sheet, like you can't be doing this stuff and I thought, mate, like if you want to get rid of me, just get rid of me and they're like, nah. We believe in you as as not just a player, but like as a as a person, we want the best for you. So um, from then on in, I was like, oh, like not I owed Redcliffe something, but uh, mm. like I just want to repay them for what they've done. So yeah, stuck with Ready um, for a bit, and then obviously got the opportunity to play last year um, at the start of the year, and then three games in, injuries started to happen. Why are you getting injured, bro? Yeah, I don't know. So third game in. Oh, I'd got that syndesmosis, mm. so I had to get surgery on that, um, and then uh, ten weeks in, uh, uh, ten weeks rehab, come back, first game back, broke my forearm, swinging arm. So I played like two games and who are you three trying to hit with a swinging arm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was John O'Reuben too. He's that. He's that ready. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a winger too. <laughs> like Seventy kilos yeah. trying to hit people with swinging arm. And just <laughs> bro shattered. So three games in. Uh, three years, three games just was not good. Um, but yeah, thinking about it, on, like thinking on it now, reason why I was getting injured and and doing one thing was one, like my mindset was just not there. Like I knew I wanted to play footy, but I always thought like, oh yeah, like um, time will get me there. Mm. Like not not putting in the work and um, doing everything that that's supposed to be mm. happening: rehab, gym, fitness. Um, it seems you get an injury to like. It seems to wake you up a little yeah. bit in a way. Like you get an injury and then you got to reevaluate. Like, okay, what the fuck am I doing wrong here? Yeah. And you go get injured again. It's like, okay, well, I didn't learn anything. Like, yeah. what can I do? And I always like blame like, oh, just little things that I that I did um, throughout my time, not taking ownership of like for like two weeks ago. I had like, a four day bender and mm. didn't train properly or or just like little stuff like that. And then that's when we went into the camp with um 
with Glenn. Mm. Uh, got linked up to that. That's not long ago, bro. No, nah, so last December it was. So I feel like I didn't, I was still going down that wrong path until, yeah, December last year after that camp. Mm. Um, and he spoke at the start of the camp. Usually you, you throw your bags out, chuck your uniform on, and they're like, oh, you need this, this, and you're off for a run. But this one started different, spoke about how he's got um, a son with uh, or some disorder um, that he can't do what, what we're privileged enough to do. Mm. Um, he's 16, but uh, functions at like an eight-year-old or just something like that. And then um, he just said in there something like, if I could... Uh, if I I wish I, as a parent I could um like one of you could be my son and I could watch you play footy, and I knew how much I hurt my dad, and so that sort of resonated with me and I was like far like, I've literally got the best opportunity here to to grow from it and here I am, like on the way to that camp eating a tub of ice cream just like not not giving a shit about anything. Mm. Yeah, so then um, through that camp. He was talking and we did all this like mindset stuff and then he just goes, everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. Mm. And I was like, fuck, like, I, I want to be an NRL player. Like, I want to do this and that, but like, what am I doing? Like, sit on the couch, drinking beers and having drugs um, where I could be out there like running, um, working on my fitness, my skill level. And mm. so, yeah, after that camp I, I reached out to Glenn just saying like mate I've done psychology um met up with like yeah psychologists and other people that um the NRL had put me towards to like change my life and I just I didn't resonate with them like it just didn't mean anything um but what you did like sort of changed my life and I'd like to do some work with you if you're if you're willing to do that and he, without hesitation um after that camp he was like mate like I see something in you but You've got to want to change yourself. So our first time meeting up, we did, um, he just goes like, I'm willing to help you if you're willing to help yourself. And then from then on in, yeah, never look back. Oh, how good's that, man? Yeah, so it's been like four, like five, six months um, working with him. But yeah, it's been a massive life changer. And not just him, bro. Like you've got like the people around you as well who are helping you as well and who are on the same path, which is cool. It's like... It's this weird transition period yeah. at the moment, man. Everyone's like, not everyone, but there's like people who are close to me are kind of like breaking through a barrier and doing what the fuck they want to do. Yeah. And not being that, that I don't know, the ego what or whatever. socially it is. normal, yeah, yeah like drinking normal? and yeah. alcohol. We were talking about it before. Like, it's good to see like more friends and family are just like, obviously, oh, we're going up too, but they're coming with us where mm. usually you'd segregate yourself from them, think, saying, oh, you're the bad guy. I want to go here to the good guys and just work with them and, and move yourself up. But Yeah, for me, bro, it's like, it's not, um, it's not so much like uh, distancing myself from other people, but it's more so when like I lay my head down on the pillow at night. It's like, you, you like gave it a crack today. Like, yeah. good job. It's That's what eats me up when I haven't done anything. I've done something that I don't believe in that day and then I lay down. Like, I can't fucking sleep because there's, like, this You've voice in my head Gone against your values, yeah. yeah. gone against your values, man. And it's, like, so now every day it's, like, yeah. you just keep building on that. Like, that's what was my stepping stone. And it's, like, just keep building, keep building. And, fuck, man, it never felt better. Turn to leave, yeah. So, what he got me to do, which is massive and hopefully people can take it out of this, but he's made me set, like, a 12-month goal, a six-month, and then, like, a 90-day and then a 30-day goal. Um, and then you just break it down and then you do, like, weekly goals. So I set like two, three goals each week and each week I'm driven to complete them and that's put him in the right stead to hit that 12-month goal. Yeah. Um, obviously after the coronavirus, like no footy and stuff, it's my goals have changed but um, I'm still setting goals. Like I'm not letting the coronavirus mm. um, dictate like where I'm going to go um, from here on in. So it's been massive, this virus. It sort of opened my eyes up to different avenues. Mm. Obviously podcasting being one, it's been... It's cool. It's been unreal, eh? Just, yeah. just talking. Like, obviously, bro chats with four bugs, but even, like, coming on your one and yeah. talking to a maid. Because it makes you feel good. makes me feel good. People listen and feel good, you know? And then when they reach out to you, you just go, like, up here and you're like, obviously, what we're doing and what mm. I'm doing now is, is working, um, not just for myself, but for everyone in my circle yeah. all around hanging on to that circle, so. Which is cool, man. And that's the one thing I struggled with, bro, is, like, setting goals. It's like, 
I, I said to myself, nah, fuck, I don't have to set goals because yeah. I, I just can't. It doesn't, like, I, I seriously can't set a goal. So what's the point? Like, it's just not for me. Yeah. But it's like, no, nah, you don't want to set a goal because you don't want to fail. Yeah. That's why I never set set goals. It's like, I was too scared to fail. Yeah. So now it's just like, set a goal and then execute the goal. You know? All you got to do it. is set it and execute it. Uh, that's funny because I've was, I was obviously got my little brother on board um, with like setting goals and then he got two weeks in and just didn't set any goals. And I was like, what are you doing? He goes, bro, like setting goals isn't me, it's you. And I was like, well, why do you want to set goals? And then we just like break it down to obviously he didn't want to to fail the goals because like when he when he fails something, like he sort of goes down, like puts his head down, mm. thinks of himself as a failure um, and doesn't like take upon it that it's a challenge that he wants to achieve and then the next week like smash it out and get it yeah, and then feel more better steps, about yourself bro. yeah so yeah. yeah obviously um if you don't set goals try get into it because man it could change your life pen and paper mm. yeah and sometimes when i was like trying to set goals i was like how the fuck do i set a goal but all you gotta do is sit there with yourself for five ten minutes and think about what you want in life yeah long term short term and then weekly is good, what you just said before, break bro. It down, yeah. yeah, which is solid. So, yeah, we touched on you got the podcast um, pumping now. You've got the thing with Colo. Um, what's it called? Image Image Property Academy. Image Property Academy. Academy. Yeah. Um, and what's your goals, bro? With with footy, you still want to be in the footy arena? Yeah, I still want to um, give uh, or try make the NRL. Um, yeah. I've got yeah, big hopes to to get back in. Obviously. Now going down the right track and um, comparing what I had to what I have now and just, yeah, just the devastation. Like I, w- I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't get a, give it a red-hot crack to, to go back into the NRL. So on my way to um, doing that, obviously need to play some footy to yeah, get my name sure. out there for now. But yeah, that's definitely um, the number one goal. And then from here on in, I want to, oh, I love working with kids. Obviously I've got a little bit of a story now, especially as 23, um, that I can help young kids not make the same mistake as me um, and then doing this image property academy so we're sort of working on something now to um, help help young kids um, like a little program um, that it will hopefully well the business plan will hopefully be done by maybe like the end of the year so mm. um, if we can get that cracking um, yeah the long term I'd, r- I'd love to just be playing footy doing podcasting and, and helping kids like that's the big dream so Hell that's yeah. what I'm going for that's um yeah, so many NRL players now don't use that leverage. Like Isaac John talks about it. Yeah, it's so much leverage. So many people following, like looking up to you, like, and they just play video games. Or yeah, you know what I mean. They feel like they're too busy um, to even do stuff, even like podcasting stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, some some boys to jump on, and it's like, no, nah, I'm too busy. I've got this, or I've got like a big day. But is it too busy, bro? When the NRL career finishes, and then like, because you've played, I don't know. So many games. So many, say you play five years. What are you doing? What are you doing after five oh, years, bro? Yeah. Like, are you are you on the construction site? Are you, or have you started podcasting while you're NRL player? And now you're podcasting yeah. for. And you've got how many subscribers, <laughs> yeah. and you can just build leverage off that. You know so. what I mean? And it's, but the thing is too, it's not, it's uh, the tools that NRL players are getting. Like NRL seems so far, like back in time, man, compared to like. American sports NFL, yeah. or whatever. It just seems like it's yeah. a massive there's a there's a bridge bro between NRL and like living a cool just life. Everything or yeah. being who you want to be. Yeah. Like it's weird, bro. I feel like it's sort of like the stigma of like being an NRL player like games, drugs, alcohol, whatever, whatever comes with being a footy player, all that fame and then um like who you want to be. There we're breaking the stigma like you see mm. footy players doing the vlogs and um, I was like John doing podcasts obviously he's not playing but Callum Ponga and, and Connor Watson are doing their thing mm. and I feel like yeah it's sort of just breaking out that that's not just the stereotype NRL player that like you can be who you are but yeah. there's a lot of more interesting people out there in the NRL that aren't who, th- who they are um, yeah. that I'd love to see like come out like be the hippie that you are or, or mm. just stuff like that that'd be pretty cool for but sure man like and, it, and again it's like caring about what people think of you in a way like you know i'm not going to do this because i might get ragged on or whatever which sucks because that's such like a 
that's such like a primary school brain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fixed mindset. Yeah. Oh, who's who's your best friend? And it's mm. like, oh, I'm not your best friend or whatever, you know? And yeah. you care about what people think of you and what you're trying to be. And it's still like that mind frame, man. It's a bit like that, yeah. Um, NFL is so cool. Eh? Just <laughs> some of the some of the people in there, um, you, like if you've seen their socials, you wouldn't think they're, no. they're like NFL guns, but... They just don't care, eh? Just do what they want to do. So yeah, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully the stigma just breaks with, with footy and mm. like people start being who they are. I'd love to see um, footy players use their leverage a bit more. Mm. Um, obviously, like giving back to, to young kids or... Because there's a few boys in there now that have um, like either done time or, or gone down the wrong path that are back there, um, yeah. back at the top. Um, so I'd love to see them sure. bring all the young kids. It'll give, give back their knowledge to all the young kids. Mm. 100%. And so you're ready next year? Yep, still at ready next year. I'll oh, sign off. We've only we only signed like a one year contract, so yeah. If Crush oh. me, if Crush Monkey want me back there next year, I'll definitely be back there next year. Yeah. Um but yeah. Solid bro. And who's um who's helped you out other than Glenn? I know Colo's helped you out. I seen you running with Colo's misses, man. Charis. Oh yeah. yeah. You <laughs> were pumping it. Yeah, so I was a I was a ten K and then you did a twenty one K, didn't you? Yeah, ten K um with Charis. That was my first ten K actually. Um but yeah, so who's helped me? Charis and Colour have been massive. Um, ben Shea. Yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. at ready. He's proper beast mode. He's, he's been awesome. Mm. Um, but yeah, my circle like with Brody and, and Zyra at Bro Chat. Um, and then yeah, just family. I've I've been hanging out with um, my uncle Rob and, mm. uh, you know, Robbo yeah. and, and Auntie there. And um, yeah, just obviously... What drives me the most is I've obviously made a change and stuff, but they're they're coming with me too. Like on the weekend, just gone. My uncle's run twenty k with me, um, and the furthest he's ran was like ten k um, or something like that. And he's he's not a little fellow too. Like he's front row, like one thirty kilos. He's massive yeah, man. When you go shake Rob's hand, it's like a yeah. gorilla, <laughs> and it just squeezes your hand. Yeah. <laughs> like so you see, you do that stuff with. Um, like family and stuff, and because they're they're coming up with you, that just makes me want to go even further and mm. even harder um, with with things in life. So that's good, bro. Um, do you does does Cody plan an RL drive you to be a better you? Yeah. Do you look up to Cody? Yeah, always, yeah. always have, always will. I know, like we've always been compared, and um, I used to hate being called like Cody's little brother and stuff. But even like through. Um, me going downhill and stuff. He's always been supportive. Always spoke highly of me. Um, to anyone he talks to, he's always like, "Oh yeah, like Jaden's the better brother, better work ethic." Like, always makes me the better brother. Mm. Um, compared to himself, but in reality, man, like he he's actually the the goat, like, <laughs> nicest person too. Which I feel like ha- helped me through footy mm. um obviously he's a bit of a smart ass and stuff but just yeah one of the nicest genuine per- people that you met so that made my transition coming like from 20s to first grade easy because everyone loved him mm. so bro. what um what's your morning routine like morning routine i've i've just gotten into it eh? like the last um two or so months so i have um vitamins what time you up like four five thirty five thirty six depending on um, my week ahead, but yeah, usually before six, and I'll um do so. I'll start off with some physical activity, whether it's a walk or a run. Um, come back home, then I'll have my vitamins, um, which is like three fish oils, a wild krill. Um, what else will I have? Vitamin, magnesium, and something else. Mm. So I'd have that. Um, brekkie. Oh no, actually, I'd have a cold shower, like warm shower, then I'd feel cold just because of <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Aubrey, the goat. Um, if you haven't heard of him or anything, like get on to Marcus Aubrey because he's yeah. so knowledgeable. Aubrey Marcus. Oh, Aubrey Marcus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah when in the morning, when the day sort of stuff. So I'd have a warm shower, then I'd feel cold for like the last minute or two minutes mm. um, just to do that. Bro, why aren't you pumping that cold straight up? Yeah, so people were saying that, eh? Hey, like, does it make a difference? No, nah, but it's more like. Doesn't make a difference, but it's like, okay, you're gonna fucking go straight in this cold thing right yeah. now, or you're gonna you're gonna go a little warm, and then you go, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I was listening to his, and he goes, "Yeah, I have a warm shower first, but then I just flick the nozzle." And I was like, "Well, I'd rather be like him." <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, have a cold shower, then I have my my vitamins and brekkie, and then yeah. um, off to pack and send. Day set. If I work at um fit stop, I 
because you do morning sessions. Yeah, I'll have to have a cold shower at like three thirty in the morning, and then take the vitamins break, and then go to go to work. So, are you journaling, or are you are you still on your goals every week, or you journal every day, or anything nah, like that? No, so I do um, set my goals out each week. Mm. Three goals, and I usually just either put them on. Um, our we have a group chat on Facebook with all the ready boys, mm. so I chuck it on there just so obviously if I put it on there, I've got to got to reach them. We'll they keep me accountable to, execute to, it, yeah. to reaching them um, so everyone can see it. Um, and then, yeah, if I don't don't reach it, I put it back on the chat. Um, but, yeah, I'm driven each week by by goals. But um, going back to that morning routine, like, if you can that, – that's that's sort of what, like, changed, changed my life and my path was, like, daily, the morning routine. Just being, um, just keeping yourself accountable and doing something every day that's making you better. Eh? And just the, uh, not the resilience, but like, oh yeah, sort of resilience of actually doing it day in, day out. Like you can do it for three days and, and go back to what you were doing, sleep until nine, but to actually do it even on weekends, like Saturdays and Sundays. Like How you, good do like, you fucking yeah, feel it? Like? like you feel like you've done stuff. Like I remember first two weeks of doing it, because um, we weren't playing footy, I did like game day Saturdays and just like posted workouts and usually did it like six, seven. Yeah. By nine o'clock, I've done my morning routine, done something physical, like post it up and then like... Feed up, bro. Feed, yeah. <laughs> 10 o'clock, I've done heaps of things, like one in the morning and you just like, I oh, feel good, like, what can I do now, so... That's good. Yeah. Like, I'm exactly the same, man. If I don't exhort, if I like don't exhort, exhort, exhaust. I don't know the word. I don't know the word. English pre <laughs> <laughs> But if I don't just use up heaps of energy, man, like by come, come um, by the end of the night, that's like what I mean. I just lay there in bed and just like, I fuck, I should have yeah. done this. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? You should have just feed it yourself. Yeah. But I think what helps me too is well, with the morning routines, if I've got like you, Jimmy, Benny Shay, like everyone's posting their morning routine. So when you're waking up at like 4.30, you check your phone first and you're like, you see everyone having a cold shower with vitamins. You're like, all right, this is why I do this. Yeah, if I can do this, yeah. Which is, yeah, it's been massive for me. I've been doing it for a couple of years. Um, just makes me feel good in the morning as well. Um, so yeah, you're working at Fitstop as well, eh? Still, yeah, Fitstop Redcliffe. Been there um, since December last year. So the start of my my journey on the right track. Um, Marky and Jane have like, helped, helped, helped me, helped helped too, me yeah. massively. Yeah, obviously just to see not just see right from wrong, but Marky's come through the footy system and knows what it's like, and mm. sort of took me under his wing as a little son. Um, yeah, gave me some sessions to, to PT because I'd done my Cert 3. Um, and then, yeah, mum and dad bought uh, Pack and Send the year before that. So um, at Norfolk, so I was going in between both of them, but it sort of just seemed like what makes me happy is like being physically active and, and mm. loving my body and um, I'm a pretty vain guy. So <laughs> 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 after doing fit stuff, um, yeah, it sort of drove me to, to see the bigger picture and where I want to go um, in life and... Yeah, now I'm finishing off my cert four. Should we done that? Not too sure if I want to go down the PT track. Like it's always good to have in the in your back pocket. Yeah, but yeah. It sort of makes you want to learn about like um like your your nervous system now and like longevity. Yeah, maximizing longevity, your VO2 max or even like I've had heaps of injuries. So um maybe like rehab uh, injury prevention sort yeah. of path like something to do with that. But something along the lines. Where um, what was your childhood like, bro? Yeah, awesome. Where'd you grow up? So, grew up in, born in Palmerston North, New Zealand. Mm. Then we moved to Christchurch when I was like two, uh, I think. And dad was in the army and they'd burn him camp. So, like growing up, I remember um, he'd take me and Cody into the army barracks and jump in the big tanks and sort of drive around them. Um, and dad was in like pretty high regard in the army there. So, yeah, everyone, everyone loved him. Um, mm. And, oh yeah, just... Best obviously having three brothers, so it was a few punch ups in the backyard <laughs> and and whatnot. So um, yeah, awesome childhood. Then we moved to um, Aussie when I was like eight, nine. You moved to Brisbane for a chance for you boys to play footy. Yep, uh, Cody. Crazy. So I think it was Cyril Connell. Um, but anyways, someone from Brizzy knew of Cody. Like flew down and seen Cody play footy, so they reached out to the parents. And then Mum always wanted to get Dad out of the army. Um, so we could be a family um, yeah. of six. So then, yeah, she moved to Brisbane first, um, got us all set up for two months, and then we moved, like, just before Chrissy um, one year. 
And then the following year, Cody ends up making like the Queensland under twelves team, and yeah, it just got stuck off from there. So, um, like our childhood in Aussie was like doozy. Yeah, it's like, Good. yeah, Dad was um, a security guard. Mum were worked for the comms, um, so they do either night shift or morning shift. So we only had one parent at home, and Cody was sort of like our parent. I remember growing up like year eight. <laughs> Year eight, Cody being yeah, your parent, year eight, year, year eight, year nine. You know, how you usually like go to parties and and stuff like that. Cody wasn't allowed because he had to look after us, so he hated us. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it now, I reckon he'd love it, but like, yeah, back then, like, yeah, just hated it. Um, mm. But yeah, best childhood. Like, I love my brothers mm. um, heaps. So you're an uncle, uncle of two, eh? Uncle of two now, yeah. Obviously, Izzy, younger brother, had baby first. Yeah, little Kingy, he's got my middle name. Yeah. Um. And then Cody had Xavier. Um. And he's Z- Xavier, Caleb, Nickareem, and Caleb's my middle name as well. So true. I was going through a bad stage in my life. Um. They obviously seen that, but they both named their their kids after me. Mm. They sort of um say that Xavier is not. It's after mum and dad because that's how you get Caleb mm. out of my parents. But I always just think like, fuck, did they feel sorry for me or something? <laughs> 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 Naming the kids after me. <laughs> Like, why would you name it after me? Because now they'd be like a shit role model. Um, yeah. But then thinking back on it now, like, it's probably a good thing because now, like, I want to do better by them. Yeah, like, they're looking up to you yeah. as well, you know. They're both little shits too, so. Are they? <laughs> Chubby ass. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. It's good. Fuck, man, that's, like, such a crazy story, bro. It was, like, you just got caught in the whirlwind. One of my good friends lived with you, man. Super. Yeah, Sips. Fuck, I love it. He really messaged me yesterday, actually. Yeah. So I talked to him, like, nearly every day. Um, he's been massive, bro. Mm. Biggest blessing in my life. Yeah, um, yeah. I used to always keep in contact, and I was just like, I used to always just shake my head, bro. Where you were going, you know? Yeah. You kind of try to reach out, and it's like, how many other people are trying to reach out to him? How much information can he actually retain that he's like not being like, yeah, the best person he can be? And then to see you, bro, like doing what you're doing now, it's like, fuck yeah, like, uh, so yeah. good. And, um, yeah, I applaud you, bro, for what you've been through. And thanks for coming on the potty, man. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Like, No, nah, it's been good. I've, I've I've enjoyed doing podcasting lately, eh, just yeah. to, to get my story. And obviously, in men, you, you get that sort of, like, stigma that it's uh, men don't talk and don't voice their opinion. They don't value their story or, or where they come from. So mm. I feel like if, if you can take value out of this um, and learn that like obviously voicing your opinion or or your feelings being vulnerable is um, is normal then life like between all of us will get so much better mm. um, and then yeah obviously if you want to turn a leaf in your life and you feel like your mates aren't going down the right track um, with you don't just leave them behind and let them let them fall like say something you you yourself build yourself up and they'll come with you eventually yeah. so yeah, or they won't. Yeah. <laughs> like, win-win. You either like, win or you don't. But yeah. yeah, obviously, you don't want to just, like, le- leave them behind, give them the opportunity to, to come with you and then let them choose it. 100%, bro. That's, yeah. Men just need to, especially men, man, yeah. they just need to speak up if they're in a hole and it's, like, hard because people do care. Yeah. As much as people say, like, just speak up if you're having a, um, having a bad time or do this, like, men still don't, fucking speak up yeah. like, because they it's because they don't have these conversations with their mates you know what I mean they're not used to being vulnerable so it's, it's out of their com- comfort zone comfort zone and it's so hard but yeah for sure brother and man thanks for coming on appreciate it can't wait to see you in the future bro a couple Next of years year or so, eh? see what happens too but easy yeah. thanks, thanks brother, brother.